right. So now we go into really the middle sections. The, the, the South is winning, 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 and you see that there's a great deal of uh, energy that is going that way. And then Lee begins to do a couple of things, which is try to leave the South and take the war to the North. And the North all of a sudden begins to win. Plus, the North is having success in their Western campaign. And we call it the Western campaign, but the Western campaign in the book really is about winning this strategic location, which is what? The southern capital. The what? The southern capital. Nope. The Western campaign is really about winning this. The river? Yes. The Mississippi River. The Mississippi river. Okay, the Western campaign is about winning the Mississippi River. And although it mentions a variety of different things in that, that chapter, uh, instrumental in winning the Mississippi River is getting into the, into the river itself. And, and that first battle is the Battle of? New Orleans. New Orleans. And that's the battle where the ships, what happened to the ships? What unique characteristic happened to the ships? Yes. They covered it in mud. Right, and they went in in the middle of the night, and and you know they were able to get the ships by. The second important battle uh, that we would say is important in the Mississippi River is which one? Siege of Vicksburg. Okay, it's a siege of Vicksburg, and why do we call it a siege as opposed to the Battle of Vicksburg? Yes. Because they didn't really, they didn't really go into the city and right. you know, attack. They just stayed outside and encircled them, so they couldn't get in. And, and the objective of staying and circling them was what? To starve them. To starve them out. To force them, to, to starve them out, to prevent them from getting assistance. And it was to get, get them to surrender. Did it work? Yes. Okay. In, in this section, in section Battle for the West, we're introduced to a general. What general are we introduced in that section? Yes. Nope. Ulysses S. Grant. Okay, Ulysses S. Grant, who is instrumental in the battle, battle of a battle for Vicksburg or the siege of Vicksburg, he's the guy that came up with the strategy, and ultimately he becomes very important. He becomes very important. Then we move on, and we are in section number four. And in section number four, we are confronted with a actually section number five. Section number four is about life within the Civil War, and we learn about a variety of different people that are participating. You, you learn about women who are instrumental in medical treatment and the, the founding member of the American Red Cross, right? Okay. And ultimately, we get to section number five, which is the section that we are currently in and we're going to be doing homework for. Okay. So let's start our homework, section number five, assessment. A what Confederate general died from his wounds in Chancellorsville? Yes. Um, Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Jackson. And can somebody tell me the story of what happened to Stonewall Jackson? Yes. What happened? Uh, um, they were, they were, uh, yeah, what was the about? They were in Chancellorsville. Okay, yes. Yeah, they were in and um, his troops accidentally shot him. That happened. How did it happen? Yes. How did his troops accidentally shoot him? Did a gun go off? And what happened? They did. They confused him for the enemy. But how can they confuse him for the enemy? He's dressed in his general's uniform. Presumably, all his men know what he looks like. So how did they confuse him? Yes. Well, they did, but presumably the soldiers know who their general is. Yes. The, all the smoke from their gun. It was no. Actually, this took place at night. Oh. This took place at night, and oftentimes in the woods. Hollywood has portrayed it this way. In the movies that I've seen that have portrayed this incident, uh, Stonewall Jackson, a series of, of officers, are riding their horses through the woods after the day's battle to survey. The, the situation so that then the next day they would know what to do. Now, because it was night, there were sentinels, and these sentinels' job is to make sure that the enemy doesn't come in 
and capture or attack while your soldiers are asleep. That would be a really bad time to be attacked. So that's their job. And in order to be able to pass by the woods, you need a password. So the people within the division knew what the password was, and the enemy did not. And apparently this sentinel asked for the password, and either Stonewall Jackson or his men did not provide it, or he didn't hear it. But what we know is that he shot, and the shot hit Stonewall Jackson. Now we also know that the shot was not immediately fatal. It didn't kill him. Now, <coughs> presumably, and I don't know this for a fact because going back in history and making that determination, you don't know. But presumably, had we had penicillin and antibiotics, his injuries would have been survivable because he ultimately died of an infection that was caused by the wound rather than the wound itself. So Stonewall Jackson ultimately dies, I believe, three days later from an infection that was developed from the wound. But what is important in this tale is that the South loses a critical general that was, was instrumental to the success of the South. Now the South, what's happening to the South is it's losing, it's losing men. It's losing that tradition because they're dying. We've already talked about uh, other generals being lost uh, in battle, and now you've lost Jackson. So, uh, and later on, we'll find out what ultimately happened. So, uh, what Confederate general died? Stonewall Jackson. Why was the Union Army defeated at Chancellorsville? Yes? Because of McClellan's overconfidence. McClellan. McClellan, is that true? No, Lee convinced Hooker that his former army would remain a defensive posture. Lee then sent Stonewall Jackson on a flanking march, which exposed a part of the land that made it Jackson got wounded and passed away. Okay. You, she's given us the timeline, but let me try to explain what it means. First of all, what is a flank? <laughs> what? <laughs> flank is usually a word that's used for behind. But your flanks are the edges of your troops. So whenever you see these little dotted lines, the flanks are the two edges. Why? Because if an army gets by them, then they, in essence, have the ability to surround the other army. So those are very important. And what is happening is Hooker originally has the ability to really take on the Southern Army. He's got more men. So he sends his troops to outflank, to go to those edges. But for some unknown reason, the book doesn't tell us, Hooker's men arrive, and instead of going offensively, attacking, they kind of set a defensive position. That gives Lee the opportunity of attacking the North in two sides. First, he sends Stonewall Jackson to attack the flanks. And he attacks the front. And so heavy and so powerful it was that it sent Hooker reeling and running. So that's what happened at Chancellorsville. Draw conclusions. Why was the Union Army, we did that. Two, identify what was the Gettysburg Address. Yes. Yes. Really, anybody else with, with a better or alternate definition of the Gettysburg Address? Yes. The Gettysburg Address was a speech in which President Lincoln praised the bravery of Union soldiers and he renewed his commitment to winning the Civil War. That's true, yes. He also created the Declaration of Independence. He did, and why do you think he did that? Because it talked about um, like all men are equal. All right, yes. Human rights. And what about that? The human rights and like what the union was. Begin to think about a, okay, a turning point. We talk about turning points. It's a pivot, okay? Things are going in one direction, and all of a sudden, they begin to pivot. I believe that the Gettysburg Address was a pivotal 
a pivot point. Why? Do you remember what Lincoln said to the South in order to prevent them from leaving? What was it? Um, yeah. yeah. He said, guys, guys, guys. Let's keep this union together, and if we must live half free, half slave, so be it. So Lincoln was ready to allow slavery to persist. Now, the Declaration of Independence had long before Lincoln, four score and seven years, and more because the Declaration of Independence was not in, in the 1780s, it was in the 70, 1770, 1776, said all men are created equal. It had said that, and Lincoln still made the pitch. But by the time he gets to Gettysburg, it becomes a pivot point. He is no longer at a point where he's willing to accept slavery in any way, shape, or form. He then quotes the Declaration of Independence by Quoting it, he's dedicating himself. Remember, Lincoln says that this is a dedication of the living, not a dedication of a cemetery. A dedication of the living to the proposition that all men are created equal. So here, Lincoln pivots, and he's no longer willing, capable, or able to accept the proposition that we are going to be half slave, half free, it's all free to Lincoln. It's all free. So it's a rededication of that proposition. Later on, the De Gettysburg Address becomes critical again for another thing that we need to think about what Lincoln did. Okay? We need yeah. to think about what Lincoln did. Then, you know, this is like this is like the, the Sequarium. If you're within the line, man, you're gonna get wet. If you're winning the line, you're going to get wet. So the Gettysburg Address is a dedication speech. It is a short speech. But it is a pivot point where Lincoln changes his perspective and now begins to look at an America that cannot be divided by slavery in his eyes. Where does that come from? I'm going to move on. Probably at the back of the room. All right. Okay. Okay. Why was... A geography important to the outcome of the Battle of Gettysburg. Kevin, why was geography important to the Battle of Gettysburg? Miss Pastor, I see you there with these dove type eyes. So please, why was geography important to the Battle of Gettysburg? I'd rather you tell me your answer. Um, because the Union had like higher ground than the Union. Okay, very good. Very good. It was harder for them to defend. Generals are always looking to have an advantage. They're always looking to have a situation where they are going to have success. I'll give you an example. Not of a general, but of a battle strategy. You've heard that somebody's in your six. Your six is a saying that refers to the clock. When a fighter pilot was fighting in the air, the best position for you to have is in the six. Imagine the fighter pilot that you're going to try to shoot down is in the middle of the clock. 12 is in front, you don't want to be in 12 o'clock because you're in his sights. You want to be in his six. <coughs> so what fighter pilots ultimately did is that they used the condition. They would go high up with the sun to their back, so the sun is in your six, and when you swoop down, what happens when you look up into the sun? You, see the sun. you can't see really well. So if you're a fighter pilot and you were up high and you came swooping down with the sun at your back, you had a good opportunity to get into a pilot six o'clock and shoot them down. That's a pilot utilizing the situation around him 
in the military you utilize